It's been over one week since White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre spoke to the American public. Even after her boss ended his re-election campaign, KJP has not taken it to the White House podium. And instead of holding a briefing this morning, she sat down for a, I don't even know if it was a softball interview, I think it was a wiffle ball interview, <laughs> with the liberal hosts of The View. Here's what she had to say about Biden stepping aside. Watch. So listen, there have been a lot of criticisms about if the White House was transparent enough about Biden's health in the months leading up to the debate. But now calls have gone further, including vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance saying if he's not up to serving four more years, can he serve out the rest of his term? How do you respond to that? I think that's ridiculous. Seriously. Um, he's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. <laughs> um, but what I will say is, like, the president decided to not run for re-election. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's all he decided on. Mm -hmm. He wants to continue to do the work. Three and a half years of unprecedented historic work. Mm -hmm. I think that shows what he's capable of doing. Mm -hmm. I think that shows how important his leadership is. And I, m moments ago, I talked about how he was able to reach across the aisle and do things in bipartisanship in the political environment that we're in. Yeah. We have so much more work to do, and he understands that. He's going to speak to this yeah. uh, in about 24 hours or so, yeah. and he'll lay that out. But this president is ready to continue to lead this country in a historic way and that is stance i mean I, that was hard to hear because the gaslighting continues harrison for her to say it's ridiculous no it's actually founded and it's certainly a founded question well, i'll tell you who's going to help the trump campaign the most <laughs> kjp and and all the surrogates and, and spokespeople because they have these platitudes of glory mm. around the policy that has failed the american people on many fronts particularly the economy where people are still feeling the bite of high prices because the number, the percentage of inflation has come down, but it was on top of like 8 and 9% inflation. I mean, it's going to take years for those prices to readjust or we have to be right-sized with how much money we make. <laughs> they may never come back down. So let them speak like that because that helps Trump. It's just empty glory about how great his policies were and no actual awareness of what people feel. But probably the thing that really does not befit someone in that position is her propensity to lie to us mm -hmm. and to cover up and to say, well, we didn't know about him. You knew before that debate as a spokesperson who hopefully spends good time with him that he was not ready for prime time. So, again, I do caution, though. You put Kamala in that job of his right now. If they continue to progressively push the coup, as you said, Emily, and push him on out and it's her... She's in place then as people go to vote. I, I think it makes it tougher. It doesn't make it impossible for Trump, but the job gets harder. Tudor, I want to dig into another platitude of glory, which I love that phrase so much, that we were subjected to this morning on The View as she describes the last few days of Biden and the human decency that he's exhibited. Let's watch. What we saw from this president the last couple days was a human decency, a good man, someone who decided not to put himself first, mm -hmm. like we've seen before, mm -hmm. but to put the American people first and this country first. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious. I, I would love a fact check on when exactly the president has put the American people first, especially, especially by stepping aside and taking away from them their right to vote who they want at the top of the ticket. But it's the ultimate cover-up. That's why she's on The View. The View is telling people what to think. Here we have KJP. She's talking about the president the entire time in past tense. Think about that. She oh. says he was reaching across the aisle. He was a, he was doing this for 54 years. She doesn't say he is. She says he was. She's over him. She's dumped him. They're on to Kamala. They're moving on. He's done. And she was asked the question whether, yep. as we pointed out earlier, was, was he done or was he told he was done? Hmm. And the question was, does he feel betrayed by that? Let's listen to her answer. You know, you know, people love Joe Biden. I mean, th there was a great expression by, uh, by his party, people talking on television all weekend about how much they love him. Mm -hmm. You know, because he is a lovable guy. Yeah. Yes. And, and he's got a good heart, you know, and all of that. There was a pylon to get him to get him to step down by the Democrats, a lot of Democrats, and, and movie stars, George Clooney, for example. But um, does Joe feel betrayed by any of that, or does he understand that it was for the country also? I mean, look, he's going to speak tomorrow. We'll hear from him directly. 
correctly, and I think he'll address whatever is on his heart. Like you said, he has a yeah. big heart. Yeah. He understands where people are. He understands uh, being having done this 36 years as a senator, eight years as vice president, and now almost four years as president. He gets it. He gets yeah. where we are as a, as a country. You know, the media reaction after he stepped down, I thought was fascinating because you see these the, the same people that kept saying Joe needs to go are now celebrating him and, and wishing him well. There's a knife in the back, you know, of course, uh, as he's walking away. But it, I'm a little more worried about and John Bolton brought this up in a Wall Street Journal editorial piece yesterday morning. I'm more worried about the global stage right now. We have a world on fire. And to the past tense point, Tudor, that you brought up, and I'm glad you said that, because if you've got a lame duck president, which is exactly what Bolton talked about, then, then if you're China, you're, you're Hamas, uh, you've got Russia, if you've got these world powers looking and seeing the chaos that's now been created and a president that is going to, if you think, hang on until November 6th, we shall see, so we can pardon his son, uh, what, is, what does that tell our enemies around the world right now? That's the bigger concern, I think, to me right now, on top of the fact that we're learning so much more about what these world leaders were seeing and talking about behind the scenes mm -hmm. at the G7, at NATO, not just this year, two years ago. And Paul, she went on to say the typical tagline that democracy is at stake. She said what he's been able to do, what we've been able to do is unprecedented. And she said, we're not leaving communities behind. I feel seen because of this president. I agree what they've done is unprecedented, but not for the reasons she stated. Yeah, certainly unprecedented. We've never had these sorts of conversations in this country where we're I got an email today from somebody asking me, do you think the president's alive? I mean, this was a serious person asking me that. I mean, I've never gotten anything like that. All I could say relative to this thing is on The View, that was a job interview. And, you know, all the other women oh. on the panel are looking around saying, wow, which one of us is going? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I haven't even we're considered like, that. that. Oh, <laughs> somebody's on the ropes. We're coming she gonna in go? with that good point. <laughs> Yikes. As we're all silent I now. Know, like, we're oh like, wow, we didn't think of that. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.